Good morning. My name is Randy Watts, and today is uh, June 10th, 2021, and we're here today to talk about the Kidderminster Carpet Mill in Mount Holly Springs, Pennsylvania, or what would have been known at the time as Papertown, Pennsylvania. The Mount Holly area was settled around 1816, well, it was settled prior to 1816, but incorporated as a borough in 1816, and because of the Union Paper Mill in the area of the present sheets was known as Papertown. Our story starts in 1828, when a gentleman by the name of James Given, who had come to America and came to Carlisle in 1790, uh, marries into a Carlisle, or, or marries a person by the name of Amelia Steele, and comes to Carlisle and starts to raise his family. And in 1828, James Given decides to build a woolen and cotton mill just south of Papertown. And he names his mill Kidderminster, in reflection of the leading carpet manufacturing district of England. And James Given was a, a merchant in fabrics and textiles, and he specialized in Irish and English fabrics. So he had great knowledge of the product, and he set about to build a mill locally to produce those. And what he did was he identified a small parcel of land in the paper town area that had never been patented from the government of Pennsylvania, meaning that he identified a piece of land that he could take possession of. It joined the creek, and he was able, by constructing a, a waterway, to develop an energy source for his woolen mill. And it's interesting that even today, if we go to the Mount Holly area and look, we can find that plot of land pretty well defined by the creek border and by the mill race for the paper mill that was later built on the site. And just to help people orient, this is the existing paper mill. The Kidderminster mill was just across um, from the front of the existing paper mill. So he gets his plot and by 1830, his sons James, or I'm sorry, Samuel and Robert are also involved in the mill. They're both Carlisle merchants and they would be involved in the Kidderminster um, mill operation during its existence. After they plot the, or get ownership of the land, they build a five-story brick mill that will be used to manufacture their woolen rugs and cassinets and other fabric items. It's interesting, this was built, it, the construction started in 1828 and was completed by 1830. They were in operation. This would have been the tallest structure in Cumberland County probably until the 1960s. So it was a rather large and elaborate structure. It took advantage of water power from Mountain Creek to operate the looms. And to just give you an idea, at the time this bridge existed, and it existed into the 1960s, was the main road if you were coming north into Mount Holly and wanted to go to Boiling Springs, you would have crossed the creek on a small bridge, turned and gone past the Kidderminster Mill. This is now the office site of MH Dielectrics. And that bridge remained in use, or a bridge remained in use there into the 1960s. But this was the structure that they built. It was quite elaborate. And their process consisted of taking raw wool or raw cotton, which is a fibrous material, but it's um, not usable in that format, putting it through a carding process, which is a, a series of fine tooth combs that would draw the fiber out of the wool or out of the cotton and align it. And they could then take that carded material, spin it into fabric, and then take that fabric and as necessary dye it and process it. And then it would go on to looms where it was manufactured into carpeting, uh, a very high grade carpeting, or it went into looms where they made uh, cassinets, satinets, and covers, which would have involved using a cotton thread that ran the length of the fabric, and the filler thread that ran side to side would have been either silk or a satiny material to produce a, a high grade of fabric that was shiny and glossy and very popular from a consumer standpoint. And they advertised frequently in the local newspapers and the regional newspapers, both for their products, but they also relied on local sources for their wool. When they became a cotton mill later in the 1840s, 
they would have probably imported cotton from the south via the railroads that then existed. But when they started out, there were no railroads in the area, and there would be no railroads in the Mount Holly area until the, the 1870s. But they would have had to import wool and cotton from outside the area because we probably were not able to um, fulfill their market uh, needs uh, locally. Their carpet was quite successful. In the 1830s, or 18, about 1830, they actually sent some carpets to Andrew Jackson. And they received a very complimentary letter back, back from him on the quality of the carpet and his appreciation for the carpets that they had sent. The other interesting thing is that there is some land on the mountain just west of where the, the mill was located that was actually originally issued by the government of Pennsylvania to Andrew Jackson, that he got the original plot on the land. So there might have been some more local connections there that we, we didn't know about. The carpets were sold at least regionally, and they won awards at, at competitions in Lancaster and also the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia and enjoyed a, a quite good reputation in terms of their quality um, and their durability, which again reflected on the use of the Kidderminster name. They were probably a little bit arrogant in using that name, but it, it worked out for them. So the mill operates under the Givens through about 1836, 1837. There was a, a severe financial panic that, that fully manifested itself in 1837, but as was often the case, the panic would affect local businesses a year or so before it, it got to be a national phenomenon. So as, as near as we can tell, the mill discontinues operations under the Givens about 1836. That's the last time period for which we have evidence that they operated it. Samuel, who was the primary operator of the mill, became insolvent in 1840, and he sought bankruptcy protection in 1842, and that definitely ended his involvement. James Given, his father, had moved to what was now named Kidderminster. The, the, when the mill was built, the local post office was called Paper Town. When the Kidderminster mill started, the town name was changed to Kinder, Kidderminster, and Samuel Given became the postmaster. Um, but James Given had moved to, to Kidderminster by 1837, he dies in February of 1841, and, and his involvement in the mill ends at that point. The mill was then leased to a combination of people, um, Moore, Matson, and Haskell. Uh, Moore was an expert in textiles and a mechanic that operated the mill. Matson was a local industrialist and investor. He lived in South Middleton, was very active in the school board and active in the community. And Haskell was a, a, a supplier of mill goods from Baltimore. So he must have seen the economic potential in the mill and he invested. But a combination of Matson, Moore, and Haskell operated the mill through about 1846. And again, the local newspapers provide advertisements um, of their products. By this time, they tended to focus more on cottons and they also offered a variety of services, the carding of the wool, the spinning of the wool, the dyeing of the wool, and processing of, of, of wool and cotton. So they had expanded the operations in an effort to make it successful. The last operations at the mill appear to end by 1846, 1847 at the latest, and the building sits empty for a time. It's, it's listed in the tax records as idle. In 1850, Perhaps as late as 1853, the original five-story building is converted now into a paper mill, and this would have become then, at that point in time, the second paper mill at Mount Holly. The original mill was the Union Mill down where Sheets is. This was the second mill. The third mill, the upper mill, um, would open a year or two after the conversion of this. But Robert and Samuel Given were very active in the paper mill when that was converted and remained active in the paper industry locally um, throughout their lifetimes. The original Kidderminster Mill, the five-story building, was destroyed by fire on July 12, 1865. It was an accidental fire. The rebels had stopped there during the war and they had taken some paper, but they didn't do any damage to the mill, but it, it was destroyed by fire in 1865. And subsequent to that, the mill was rebuilt and it became eventually known as the Lower Mill. It's now the MH Dielectrics. The building that was built to replace it in 1866 through the 1870s still stands and is still in active use by MH Dielectrics. The Kidderminster Mill set across the street where the office building of the present mill is, which is private property and shouldn't be entered without permission. But 
a, a mill has operated on that site can pretty much continuously from the 1830s until the present time. The Givens went on to become fairly successful. Robert had a home in, in Mount Holly. It also burned in 1865, and he moved to Carlisle. And Samuel Given, who was the other active partner, lived in Carlisle. Robert Givens' daughter, the granddaughter of James Givens, was Amelia Steele Givens, who was the person that gives the money to the library. Interestingly, after her father dies, she becomes the caretaker for Samuel, and she remains unmarried until after Samuel's death in 1892, at which time she marries and, and um, goes on her own way. But prior to that, she had built the library in Mount Holly, the Given Library, so that was built with some of the, the Given family money. The mill stays under the Given, or the Given stay involved in the mill, and the Mullins stay involved in the mill till the 1907 era that goes bankrupt. It goes bankrupt again in 1912, and it's then purchased by Samuel Kitzmiller, and it goes through a progression of ownership um, until the present time. But that's a brief review of the Kidderminster, or Kidderminster Woolen Mill. More information can be found in the book, um, The Paper Mills of Mount Holly Springs, that's available at History on High, and information will be provided to uh, the webpage if anybody has any interest in that book. So again, I appreciate the opportunity to speak today and hope it was informative. Thanks.